Petro Company. The American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes, Lucky Strike, Pell Mell, Herbert Tarrington with the genuine cork tip presents Danny Thomas, Gene Hagen as his wife, with Sherry Jackson and Rusty Hamer as their children in Make Room for Daddy. Friends, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, and the fact of the matter is... Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting fine tobacco. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike, lucky strike. Sure, lucky tastes better. Why everybody knows lucky strike means fine tobacco, fine, light, mild tobacco that just naturally tastes better and. Luckies are made better. They're round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly with fine tobacco in a better made cigarette. Golly, you're just bound to get better taste. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact is... Terry, do you think that's enough tinsel? Well, almost. Mommy, can I stay up and wait for Daddy? I'm afraid not, honey. He won't get in till 4 o'clock. Rusty, don't hang that up there. That's Daddy's sign. Santa Claus wouldn't like that. I've got news for you. There isn't any Santa Claus. <laughs> Rusty, of course there's a Santa Claus. You mean you haven't caught on yet? <laughs> Rusty, you come here. Come here. Now, what ever put such an idea into your head? You took me to all stores, and I counted 15 different Santa Claus. <laughs> oh. Macy's has one on every floor, and the one on the third floor wasn't even fat. How do you know? I stuck him in his stomach with a pin and blew out his inner tooth. <laughs> Now, now, look, Rusty, I can explain. You see, Santa Claus is very busy, and, well, he needs a lot of helpers, and well, I'm sure he's going to bring you your red bicycle, and, well, after all, he's bringing your father home tonight all the way from Detroit, isn't he? Now, you just hang up your stocking and see what happens. Well, I'll give him one more chance. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that? Grandma made it for me. For an unbeliever, you really go overboard. <laughs> I talked with Margaret and the kids. I can hardly wait to get home. Neither can we. You know what she told me? What a sentimental wife I got. They're saving half of the Christmas tree for me to decorate. Her mother's more sentimental than that. I get the whole tree to decorate. No. She's too cheap to buy the ornaments. Just because it's Christmas, I'll overlook this obvious opportunity to conk you over the head. Here, here, Penny. I get one every Christmas. Well, not for you. <laughs> I'll go and see if the cab is ready. You feel all right? I feel great. Carry this. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, Danny. What? I want to show you what I got Patty for Christmas. What'd you get? I've got a carry on me or she'll find it. What? <laughs> well, a pretty girl is like a thing. Way. It's a $500 monogram for stone. I picked it up at an auction for 35 bucks. <laughs> Wait a minute. That monogram is a C. You can't give that to Patty. I've been preparing her for three weeks. I've been calling her Cookie. <laughs> cookie. Cat's outside. Hurry up. Oh, we'll be right with you, uh, Cookie. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. Hey, Tom. Gee, boss, I'm glad you're still here. I want to say thanks for everything. And if you ever want us to work here again, be very happy to. And, and Merry Christmas to you. Let's get going, eh, kids? Uh, boss, you're on the thing. Danny, would you do me a favor? Oh, sure, but I got a cab double parked. 
Don't worry about the cab. I sent it away. It you took can't me half do hour that. to find it. Hey, what's the matter with you? We, I got reservations on a plane. I canceled them. Canceled them? What do you mean? Yeah, I want to get home. Danny, Les Harris was supposed to open here tomorrow and be here through Christmas week. The poor lad can't make it. Pneumonia. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about him. Oh, I thought you would be, Danny, because you've got a heart. A big one. Well. So I was wondering if you could find it in your heart to take Harris's place through Christmas. Oh, come on, boss. I, I can't do that. Really, I can't. I, 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 I'm sorry, boss. I, excuse me. I, I, I just can't. That's all. I got a wife and, and kids and, and, you know, with the Christmas tree and all. I just can't do it. Well, if you can't find it in your heart, you'll find it in your contract. <laughs> right here, where it says I have an option for two weeks, and that includes the holidays. Where, where, where did you say that? In the fine print, pal. <laughs> there. It's there, all right. And it mentions us all. We're stuck. Danny! You don't know how much I appreciate this favor. Yeah. Sure. I got a wife and kids waiting for me at home. I even sent their presents by parcel post. Now I don't have the pleasure of being home and watching them open them. You know what you are? You're just a plain Scrooge, that's all. You're strictly a Santa Claus destroyer. You have my, my nomination for the title of the meanest man in the whole world. That's what. You're breaking my heart, laddie, but that does not break the contract. First show tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Well, we never go until 10.30. This way we can get in three shows. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks again, pal. Ah, you father wakes up. Danny! <laughs> Hello, dear. Get me long distance. I want to call New York, honey. The Plaza 31098. And my father said there was a Santa Claus. I'll never trust him again. <laughs> I'll wait, dear. I'll wait. Come on, Benny. Let's unpack. And we'll have to phone Mother and tell her we won't be home. I like that idea. Let's call her. <laughs> and for a Christmas present, we won't reverse the charges. <laughs> Hello? Honey? Magoo? I get you up? Oh. You better not wait up, sweetheart. No, I can't come home. No, I'm not joking. I... I got a two-week option clause, and I just didn't even know about it. And besides that, honey, he's stuck. Les Harris is sick, and... I'm sorry, sweetheart. Will you explain it to the kids for me? Oh, look, Mug. Don't cry, baby. I, I feel just as bad as you do. I'll make it up to you. Yeah, I'll call you tomorrow. Merry Christmas. One of America's most colorful and exciting events, the tobacco auction. Here is an auction in progress. An alert tobacco buyer has found a basket of exceptional quality. He signals his bid, but other buyers want this prime light leaf. The price goes higher and higher, but when the top bid is made, it is... Sold American. Sold to the American Tobacco Company, the makers of Lucky Strike. Another basket of light, mild, good-tasting tobacco. And that happens thousands of times at auction after auction. That's why you can be sure that Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine tobacco in a better-made cigarette, which just naturally adds up to better taste. After all, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So be happy. Go lucky with a carton. Thank you very much. Please, 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 uh, no applause. I don't want to interrupt your dinner. Don't drop your food to applaud. If you're, if you're eating with one hand, rap on the table with the other, that's good enough. <laughs> eat like I eat, you'll have no hands for you. Just nod your heads, I'll understand. <laughs> Let's get on with the festivities here. And we have those great, talented nightclub entertainers, the kids that you're all been waiting to see. And I'm sure that you're going to enjoy them again tonight. And here they are, Patty Moore and Benny Lessie. Go, go! <laughs> Isn't he a pretty 
boy. I was a Lux baby. <laughs> Look at that lovely flesh-colored hair. I shine it and shine Nola. <laughs> Tell me, how do you keep your head so satin smooth and unwrinkled? I have it sand for eyes to keep it from shrinking. <laughs> Went down the street this morning, went down to me and Jamie. This free boy was waiting, waiting right there for me. I said the name is Benny. I said they call me Patty. Ah, we were both so chatty. Your body, oh, Joe, whoopee. Pretty boy. Pretty boy. Sam. Pretty boy. Please watch your knees. Pretty boy. I will Valentino. Pretty boy. Louder. Pretty boy, you kissing me, huh? Thanks, Rosa Marie. Pretty boy. Yeah, we like a tulip. Pretty boy. Pretty like a tulip. Pretty boy. Pretty boy. Pretty boy. Why now? Pretty boy. Drink the diamond dozen. Pretty boy. Wish you were your cousin. Pretty boy. I'll hold you tight. And then you'll never get away, 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 never get away. I'll become a tree and shoot you out of sight. Then I'll become a red caboose and trail you day and night. I'll become an oyster beneath the sea I'll dwell. Then I'll become a little pearl and cuddle in your shell. Oh, cozy. Oh, you'll never get away, never get away, never get away, never get away, never get away. You'll never get away, never get away, never get away, you'll never get away. I'm going to pack my trunk and travel far away. I'll be a Marcel Wave and get in your toupee. Oh, pony boy, pony boy, won't you be my pony boy? Oh, look out, Gladys, you'll throw your swarth out. And fly for all I'm worth. Then I'll become a parachute and bring you down to earth. Oh, you'll never get away, never get away, never get away, never get away, never get away. You'll never get away, never get away, never get away, you'll never get away. Little boy, you're the one boy I like. We'll be close, so determined. Close as Mamie and Ike. Pretty soon we'll have our whole family. Just Patty and me. And mother makes three. Little boy, with your cute little ways. I'll be your cutie. For the rest of my days and this great big world, it's fine, just fine, little boy, cause you're mine, all mine, all mine, little boy, cause you're mine. Uh, I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to know that I am performing tonight under protest. I mean, I, uh, was supposed to be home with my family for Christmas. It's already Christmas Eve, but I'm still here. Seems there was a clause in my contract which enables the stinking boss of this establishment to be a stinking boss. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about the job. After all, I... I remember it wasn't so many years ago when they wouldn't even let me in the back door of this wonderful nightclub. I don't have to tell you, I've played just about every honky-tonk and sawdust joint in this town. Many wonderful things have happened to me since then, though. Because there's only one thing that causes me to want to blow my brains out. All the years I was starving to death, there was no income tax. <laughs> The year I made good, they came to get it. <laughs> and they've been coming ever since. <laughs> I remember back in 1940, right in this town, I used to borrow six cents to take the Grand Belt streetcar. I figured it out by the end of the year, in small change, nickels and dimes and pennies, I owed $114. I thought I'd never get out of the hole. What a horrible debt, $114. Since 1945, I have played every major theater and nightclub in our country. Two wonderful, successful engagements at the London Palladium, the last one during the coronation. And I have signed contracts to work for the next 14 years. And today, I stand before you proudly owing $280,000. <laughs> How successful can you get? <laughs> they keep saying, count your blessings. So I count my blessings. I have healthy children. They love their daddy. A wife that I've known ever since she was a little girl. I tell you that she is really and truly the backbone of this humble career. I say honestly and sincerely and publicly, at the risk of sounding treatly, 
that I love her as much as one man is allowed to love one woman. But lately, she's gone completely nuts. <laughs> Here's a girl never heard of income tax. Doesn't care. She reads in the paper how much I make. That's how much she spends. <laughs> You should see the way she's decorating our house. We have Chippendale and Sheraton in the kitchen. <laughs> we got no carpets, we got real Persians laying on the floor. <laughs> At a buck twenty an hour. <laughs> I don't know where she got in the habit of living like this. I mean, she wasn't born with a silver steam shovel in her mouth. <laughs> the kid was raised on the other side of the tracks. I remember when I first met her, she was just 14 years old. She was already working, helping to support her family. She had a job in a fish cannery. <laughs> had a very important job. Just before they put the sardines in the can, she used to close their eyes. <laughs> I see nothing particularly funny about that. How'd you like to open a can of sardines and have 24 eyes? <laughs> I'm not making fun of my wife, just stating a few facts, that's all. A few years ago, I used to give her $10 a week for the table. $10 a week, she'd cook roast pork, roast veal, roast beef, wonderful dishes, stews, everything you could think of. Today, I give her $10, she won't cook. <laughs> She won't let the cook cook. <laughs> We're all on a health diet by Gaylord Hauser. Cracked wheat and yogurt, leafy lettuce and lemon juice. This is the whole thing. I walk around puckered up all the time. <laughs> Kids are suffering from malnutrition. I'll leave it to you. Is it normal for an 11-year-old child to weigh 16 pounds? <laughs> they keep screaming, let's eat. I don't get it. When we couldn't afford it, we wanted to. Now we got money. It's not stylish to eat. This I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know, she comes from a family of eaters. My mother-in-law's a great eater. Great eater? She allowed to eat any four truck drivers in Detroit. <laughs> this woman eats baked potatoes like you and I eat grapes. <laughs> She's always the first one at the table. I'll never forget one night in a hurry, she got her false teeth in upside down. <laughs> like to chew off half her head before she realized. <laughs> oh, they love to eat. Yes, sir. At her house, they really eat. They eat fast. It's like the Indianapolis Speedway with spoons. <laughs> I was there. I bowed my head to say grace. I looked up. The maid said they're having coffee in the living room. <laughs> I'm not making fun of her. I wish my wife would do the same thing. She just won't do anything. She doesn't care. Except she'll spend our money, which we haven't got. And that's another thing. People say to me, how can you make jokes about it? If you earn a lot of money, you wind up with very little. Doesn't it kill you? No. I'm an actor. Good, bad, or indifferent, I'm an actor. And actors are dreamers. Dreamers live in a bubble. Every now and again, a song comes along with just the right words, the right phrases. Phony words. Unbelievable phrases. But actors believe them. You believe them, too. You'll never have an unhappy day as long as you live. Sing songs like this one here. The world belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. Hey, the stars belong to everyone. They shine up there for you and for me. We've got the flowers in spring. Little birds that sing. Sunbeams that shine are yours and are mine And love can come to anyone Oh, the best things in life are free Yes, the best things in our life Oh, they're free There you are. Nice big penthouse. Nothing too good for you. Al? Thanks a lot. If you think moving me into this place is gonna change my opinion, you're crazy. You are still the meanest man in the world. Cry, cry, cry. Will you stop it already? Today is Christmas. All over the world, people are full of the Christmas spirit. You cry, cry, cry. Mistletoe yet. Who am I supposed to kiss, Benny? <laughs> Wouldn't you prefer me? Sure, if you were here, I would... <laughs> hey! Hi! Mm. Oh, Merry Christmas, sweetheart. Where did you come from? Daddy! Oh, Daddy! 
Hey! Daddy, oh, Daddy! Oh, my God! Oh, how are you? How you feel? How'd you all get here? Mr. Kelly chartered a plane for us. Why, you stinking boss. <laughs> Staying away from your family on Christmas. You're a monster. I'm a monster? You're the guy that helped me to the contract. If you were half a man, you'd have walked out and let me sue you for every nickel you owe to gub. <laughs> there. Go decorate your hair. <laughs> He's nice, but he's hard to figure out. I, yesterday, he ruined my holiday. I thought the world had come to an end, and now suddenly... I'm afraid to touch it. You sure it's not loaded? <laughs> don't be so cynical. Decorate your half. Come on, Rusty. Help me, son. I don't feel like it. Why not? What's the trouble? It's a lot of work for nothing. There isn't any Santa Claus. <laughs> what kind of talk is that, son? Hey, what traitor has been filling you with this enemy propaganda? You, you, you gotta believe. Sure, boy. Rusty. Remember what I told you. Wait a minute, honey. I can handle this. I mean, it ought to be simple enough to explain Santa Claus to my own son. Now, uh, up in the North Pole, there's a little workshop. See? Why is it up in the North Pole? Well, it's uh, why? <laughs> Why is it up in the North Pole? <laughs> You're explaining this simple thing, not me. Well, I guess maybe Santa Claus wanted to get out of the high rent district. <laughs> I don't believe it. And anyhow, if I'm in Detroit and he's looking for me in New York, how will he find me? Oh, that's easy, dear. Tell him. <laughs> Sure, sure. He comes down a chimney, and there you'll be. What chimney? What chimney? The, the chimney? <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you, in these modern hotels, you see, Santa comes through the air conditioning. How does he get through those little holes with his fat stomach? Hmm. He goes on a diet. <laughs> How do I know? This is all real ridiculous. Your father tells you something you're supposed to believe it, and that's that. Don't ask any questions. And besides, when you get your presents, you'll believe in Santa Claus. But it's Christmas already. Where's my red bicycle? How do you know I'll get presents? How do I know? How do I know? Questions, questions. Because they went to New York by parcel. Holy Toledo. <laughs> What's the matter? The essence spray. I enum say by parcel pay oast pay. <laughs> the stores are all closed now. I knew it. I knew there won't be anything for me because there isn't any Santa Claus. There is. Yes, there is, son, and there will be plenty for you. And I'll tell you what I'll do tonight. I'll take you and, and Terry. The whole family will go catch the dinner show at the club. How about that? Wouldn't huh? it be wonderful? Did you hear that, Rusty? We can go to the club yeah. tonight. Yeah. How about that? I don't care about it. I just know there isn't any Santa Claus. There isn't any Santa. Claus. No, Rusty. Now, now, honey, come here. Now, let me explain. Yeah? Hey, shh. Where are the kids? In the bedroom with their mother. Why? Good, good. Pick that up, huh? Grab, pick what up? <laughs> grab that out there. You were shopping in a drugstore? Go on, grab it. <laughs> hey, what do you think? Shh. On tippy toes. <laughs> but the stores are all closed today. How'd you get this stuff? I quote. Placing a finger alongside of my nose and giving a nod up the chimney, I rose. <laughs> I don't get you at all. I just don't understand this big switch. You wouldn't let me go home. You were, a, you were absolutely a monster about the whole thing. Then you spend all this money, you bring my family here. If you're such a sentimental guy, why don't you let me go to New York in the first place? What do you want me to do? I can't operate my club without an attraction. If I let you go home, then I have to let all the help go without any pay over the holidays and close the club. Now, you wouldn't want me to do that, would you, pal? Then I would be the meanest man in the world. This way, everybody's happy. <laughs> Merry Christmas, pal. You better get out from under that mistletoe, kid. <laughs> 
And now, a word from Donald Woods for our alternate sponsor, Spidell. What father wouldn't like to capture this wonderful moment forever and carry it with him wherever he goes? Well, he can do just that with Spidell's new picture watch band. See? The picture of the ones he loves. As easy to look at as his watch. What a wonderful Christmas gift it'll make. A handsome Spidell watch band. Convenient. Comfortable. A really useful piece of jewelry. With the nameplate here. And inside it, a place for a picture. A picture of your family. Or a picture of your sweetheart. Why, there isn't a man in the world who wouldn't get a real thrill out of a gift like this. The cost, $17.95. So give him a Spidell picture watch band for the warmest, most exciting, yet useful Christmas gift you ever gave him. Well, this has been a wonderful Christmas. My son Rusty and I both learned there is a Santa Claus. Imagine my surprise when I found out he didn't have to wear a red suit and a long white beard. That he could even be a stinking boss with a shiny blue serge and a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> and a wonderful Christmas after all. There's really no holiday like it, you know. And no song that describes it any prettier than this one here. Christmas, with its trees and windows all aglow. Christmas with its snow and ice and mistletoe. Christmas, can't you hear the church bells ringing? From within, you can hear the choir boys singing. Christmas, everybody. We'll be back next week for Spidell Watch Bands. Now I'd like to say good night for myself and my family and for the American Tobacco Company, makers of Lucky Strike, Pell Mell, and Herbert Territon with the genuine cork tip. Good night, folks. Daddy, starring Danny Thomas, is presented alternately by Spidell Watch Bands and the American Tobacco Company. American